In the previous episode, Naomi decided to find a boat and leave the area, planning one last job. She skillfully dragged three collectors ashore. Unfortunately, one of the collectors had an unlucky plunge into the water when hit by the tranquilizer and had to be pulled up tight to the side of the boat. But upon inspection, he was already breathless. Naomi felt no guilt over this. Collectors weren't exactly saints, and she mercifully sent the man on his last journey. Naomi opened her tools, preparing to cut off the fingers of the remaining two men as usual. But just as she was about to begin, Naomi suddenly noticed a familiar scar on the face of one collector. Pulling down the mask revealed a burned face, it was Dwight. Naomi seemed to realize something and uncovered the other collector's mask. How could it be them? Suddenly, a child pointed a rifle at her. I didn't know there were kids on board. Where did you come? I hid under the tarp when you shot him. Can you put the gun down? I'm telling Padre what you did. In the boy's mind, Padre was paramount, and he intended to relay the information back. Our boat got attacked. Vince, where's Whistler? Dead. She killed him. The Red Kite and Starling? She knocked them out. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sherry and Dwight were gradually waking up, though still groggy. Before Finch could reveal his location, Naomi acted swiftly. She managed to grab the walkie-talkie, but the yacht was damaged. Naomi cursed as the boat she had finally secured was now ruined. As Dwight and Sherry became more aware, they immediately guessed Naomi must be the one who had been ambushing collectors. Dwight snatched the tools from her. As an old friend, he naturally wouldn't betray Naomi. He didn't want Naomi to continue such acts. If discovered, the consequences would be dire. Naomi, wanting no contact with others, prepared to leave to find another boat. But Dwight stopped her, saying the child had appendicitis and needed her help to perform surgery. I don't have what I need in my kit to do an appendectomy. Well, you need to figure it out. Why is that? Because if you don't, I'm going to tell Padre, who's been cutting off all this collector's fingers. I just wanted to leave. Why? Because it's not safe for me here anymore. <laughs> Sherry approached Finch, telling him to wait over there. Naomi looked at Sherry's gentle eyes seemingly guessing something. Remember what I taught you. You see Carrion? Aim for the eyes. As Finch walked away, the couple again inquired about what had happened to Naomi, sensing she had changed, seeing Naomi's reluctance to speak. Sherry proposed, how about this, we'll help you find a boat after the surgery, and you can go wherever you want. Padre won't know anything about you. Naomi realized their intense concern for the child meant only one thing. That's your kid, isn't it? The one you were pregnant with when they found us on the rafts. The husband and wife looked at each other and didn't say anything, which is considered to be tacit acceptance. At Padre, it was almost impossible for families to meet. Everyone was assigned to work in different places. Children were even told they were abandoned by their biological parents to facilitate brainwashing. Dwight, responsible for teaching children combat skills at Padre, guarded his son in this way. Of course. Padre didn't know he was the boy's father. Even Finch himself thought he was an orphan abandoned by his parents. Dwight and Sherry had bribed some contacts to secretly reunite and take their son out. Their goal was to find Naomi to treat Finch's appendicitis, then quietly return him without anyone noticing. Naomi no longer refused. After all, it was her old friend's son. She indeed knew a place where they could perform the surgery but insisted they promise not to ask questions about anything they saw there and to leave immediately after the operation. Come on, let's go. At night, they arrived at an open field with a train parked in the middle. The place Naomi said was suitable for surgery was here. Arriving at the door of one carriage, Naomi first knocked on the door frame. No zombies appeared. So they entered. Inside, the place was cluttered. But all the necessary medical equipment was present. However, the place was somewhat eerie. Dwight and Sherry wondered how Naomi had found this place. Moreover, a zombie's head was clamped in the air on an operating table, groaning. You sure this place is safe, Jim? Naomi didn't answer but calmly plunged a dagger into the zombie's head. She turned on the power, and suddenly the entire workshop's equipment came to life. After some preparation, the surgery was about to begin. Finch was a bit nervous, and the couple quickly comforted him, urging him not to overthink. Dwight had even prepared a gift. Unable to reveal his identity as the father, but at least he could be by Finch's side. As Sherry went to fetch equipment, she inadvertently saw a medical record filled with dense text and images. The people in the pictures were in a sorry state, with wounds all oozing with pus. When she thought about Naomi's weirdness, 
She couldn't let her son be treated so easily until she knew what was going on here. Naomi felt somewhat guilty but still said it was them who had asked her to perform the surgery, and they had promised not to ask questions. While they were talking, there was a noise at the door. Adrian, the man with a gun, had followed them and walked in, thinking they were up to no good when he saw Finch on the bed. Naomi quickly explained it wasn't what he thought. My daughter Hannah. Padre's got her. One of you knows where she is and you're gonna tell me. She's right. Look, this does not have to end in a fight. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure your daughter is fine. Padre hasn't lost a kid yet. And I teach them how to protect themselves. So if you tell me what she looks like and we can figure something out here. Adrian, your location. Please respond. Dwight acted fast, snatching the gun away. The gunshot led to a power outage in the carriage and the noise attracted nearby zombies. Inside the car, Dwight takes the initiative and crushes the intercom with his foot. With the power out, a smooth surgery was impossible. Naomi mentioned an emergency backup system in the last carriage that could restore power. With his son lying on the bed in pain, Dwight told his wife to keep an eye on Adrian with the gun while he prepared to cross the train. But as Dwight reached the door, Naomi blocked him, saying the path was impassable. It's full of the dead. Damn it, June, just tell us what happened here. I used to work here. She then revealed the truth. Seven years ago, after being taken to Padre, she was forced to work here on a secret operation unknown to the outside world. Padre was conducting human experiments here, attempting to use radiation therapy principles to treat zombie bites. The pictures Sherry saw were so horrifying because the people exposed to radiation suffered immensely, far worse than death by zombies. Naomi was coerced into using those people as guinea pigs, and she couldn't bear it, eventually escaping Padre. That's why she had been posting warnings for a year, urging people to stay away as they were still reeling from shock. Finch cried out again in pain, the priority now was to turn on the power, but the exterior was swarming with zombies, making it impossible to bypass. Eventually, Dwight thought of a way to reach the last carriage via the train roof. Ten minutes later, they've completed their mission, turned on the emergency power, and are now heading back the way they came, but Sherry seemed preoccupied, contemplating something. She turned and said, after so many years, I finally hear you call me dear again, and I saw our son. It feels really good. Sherry wasn't satisfied with just this, especially after seeing what Padre was researching. She no longer felt comfortable with her son living in such a place, and the situation felt so strange. Having their child close yet unable to acknowledge him, telling him he was abandoned by his parents. So, Sherry suggested they leave Padre, the three of them finding a place to live peacefully until they could expose Padre's true face. Dwight was momentarily stunned. Seven years of routine had made it hard for him to adapt, and escaping meant facing pursuit. But he loved Sherry and would unconditionally support her decision. In that moment, they seemed to truly find themselves, and the weight that had been on their hearts for seven years quietly dissipated. But as they were kissing and engrossed in each other, a creaking sound came from beneath their feet. Suddenly, Naomi also heard the loud noise and quickly took out her walkie-talkie to inquire what had happened. They couldn't answer in time because they were surrounded by zombies. Dwight also reacted quickly, immediately using his pistol to shoot at the zombies. However, there were too many of them, and without melee weapons, they could only temporarily climb up the luggage racks to avoid them, but their bullets were limited. And after a few shots, they ran out, making it impossible to escape. Naomi told them to stay put while she went to rescue them. Dwight urgently told her not to worry about them because Finch still needed her to perform surgery on him. If they didn't survive, he made her promise to take care of his son. Naomi looked back at the child and made a decisive decision. Adrian, standing nearby, didn't understand why she would risk it, but Naomi firmly stated that it was precisely for the child that they, as parents, must survive. After saying this, Naomi resolutely opened the train car door fully aware of what was inside from their previous experiments. The car was filled with formaldehyde-soaked heads and zombies that had undergone radiation treatment, all locked up for observation and study. It was unimaginable to think of the inhumane experiments conducted by the leaders of Padre. These zombies, due to radiation, had lost all their hair and had pus-filled sores on their skin. Naomi looked at them and felt guilty. That's why she didn't want to be in contact with people anymore, even though she was forced to do it. She couldn't get over it. Naomi accelerated her pace to get out of the carriage as soon as possible. But unexpectedly, the door was locked and she couldn't open it no matter what she tried. Meanwhile, the zombies behind her were pulling at the pipes, making a racket. She became anxious and quickened her efforts. As Naomi feared, 
The zombies had broken free from their chains and were approaching her. Unable to open the cursed lock, Naomi had no choice but to confront the zombies, pulling out her pistol and facing them head on. <laughs> But while dealing with the third zombie, she was knocked down due to the close distance, and her pistol fell out of reach. As she struggled to get up, more zombies closed in. Naomi had to use her feet to hold them off, but this was no solution. Just then, she heard noises from the direction she came from. Adrian had followed after some contemplation. Adrian, not a bad person, was seeking Naomi only for information to rescue his daughter. He had never harmed anyone. Seizing the opportunity, Adrian once again invited Naomi to join his group to overthrow Padre along with other parents who had lost their children. Naomi, afraid to face certain truths, once again refused. Meanwhile, Finch, armed and ready to contribute, followed. It's too dangerous, you need to go back. I can handle the carrion. Red Kite taught me how. Red Kite was his mentor. After all, Dwight and Sherry were lying on the luggage rack, surrounded by zombies below. Just then, gunshots rang out as Naomi and the others arrived. Fortunately, with coordinated teamwork, they quickly cleared out the zombies. I'm gonna tell Padre how I fought the carrion. At this moment, Sherry felt a tinge of sadness. The child was always thinking about Padre. He had been brainwashed too deeply. Dwight and Sherry exchanged a glance, and, as previously agreed upon, they decided to tell Finch the truth. Where were your parents? No, you're not. No, no. Yeah, I, sweetie, I know this is a lot for you to take in right now. Finch hadn't yet recovered from the shock of the truth when his wound began to hurt again. Now, the only option was to return to the operating room to complete the surgery. Just as they turned to walk back, Adrian heard something. It was as if he had a premonition. He looked toward the door of the train carriage. That glance sent a chill through his body and shook his soul. Because the small figure behind them was his daughter, Hannah, whom he had longed for day and night. Hannah had evidently become one of the zombies. Naomi also looked on sadly. Or was it discovered? Adrian suddenly flew into a rage, grabbing Naomi's collar and shouting, You knew all along, didn't you? With sorrow, Naomi replied, When Hannah first arrived at Padre, I treated her asthma. She was terrified and missed her father. Hannah also reminded me of my own daughter. I wanted to take care of her, to make her feel safe. One time, when Hannah was out for training, she was bitten by zombies. The wound was on her back, and I couldn't amputate it, but I had to do something to save her. With that, Naomi revealed another shocking secret. It turned out that the human experiments had not initially been proposed by Padre, but by her, because Naomi had once seen Alicia infected with the zombie virus and still surviving despite exposure to radiation, she believed that radiation might save the child. You did this to her? I gave her radiotherapy! With equipment that we scavenged from a hospital, it stopped the infection. But the amount of radiation that it took just made things worse for her. And I wanted to end her suffering. So why didn't you? Because Shrike wouldn't let me. She wanted to let her turn. So she could study her. Initially, Naomi just wanted to save people and did indeed stop the infection. But later, when Shrike found out, she forced Naomi to continue her research at gunpoint, completely disregarding the patient's suffering. Naomi realized that the experiments would only stop if she fled, so she left Padre. However, before Naomi escaped, she anesthetized Shrike and cut off her index finger so that she could no longer pull the trigger to force anyone. Even later, Naomi used the same method to ambush the collectors outside, cutting off their index fingers so they couldn't use guns to threaten the parents. After hearing everything, Adrian's world collapsed. He couldn't blame Naomi, he even had to thank her for taking care of his daughter. Adrian only hated himself for not saving his daughter earlier and letting Hannah suffer so much. She was all I had left. I understand now why you want to be alone. After saying this, Adrian resolutely walked toward the door. The three people behind him watched quietly and sadly. They were all parents or had been parents. They could understand Adrian's pain at that moment. Sherry and Dwight became even more determined to take the child and leave. The blood bond, the family connection, is indeed a very sacred and mysterious thing. With just one glance, Adrian could recognize his daughter. 